Welcome back to our weekly environmental news report. First news. Last Wednesday, House Republicans approved a measure that ends a regulation aimed at preventing coal mining debris from being dumped into nearby streams. This was one of the first steps taken by the GOP to dismantle former President Barack Obama's environmental legacy. Republicans argue that, quote, the stream protection rule is really just a thinly veiled attempt to wipe out coal mining jobs. However, this frightens environmental groups that have fought for years to assure clean water. This is a huge step backwards for America. Neil Gorsuch is President Trump's Supreme Court pick and a staunch conservative. Environmental groups reacted with both outrage and caution to his nomination, remarking that he is, quote, unlikely to be seen as a champion of environmental protection. On reviewing his record, they found that he was reluctant to engage on the merits in environmental and public lands cases. In addition, his mother, Ann Gorsuch, was the first female head of the EPA, but her tumultuous term was marked by sharp budget cuts, rifts with employees, and other scandals. Like mother, like son? Hopefully not. President Trump's border wall is a huge political issue, but could also have serious environmental consequences. The wall will continue to cut off water flow and wildlife in a changing climate. In addition, the production of cement, the material that holds concrete together, is a major source of greenhouse gas emissions. After Trump's announcement, many climate activists said that the new president has it backward. Stemming the flow of refugees and immigrants starts by addressing climate change. According to Jean Karpinski, president of the League of Conservation Voters, if President Trump was as concerned about our nation's true national security issues, he would be tackling climate change head on while safeguarding refugees and immigrants from the worst impacts of a warming planet and ongoing turbulence in their homelands. Radiation levels inside a damaged reactor at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station are at their highest since the plant suffered a meltdown in the Japanese tsunami almost six years ago. The recent reading at 530 sieverts an hour is much higher than the records before. A single dose of 10 sieverts can be fatal within weeks. The facility's operator, TEPCO, also revealed a meter-wide hole in the metal grating beneath the same reactor's pressure vessel which was probably created by nuclear fuel that melted and then penetrated the vessel after the tsunami. Dangerously high radiation has made dismantling the plant very difficult. A 722-foot-tall, 9-megawatt wind turbine operating at an offshore testing site near Austria, Denmark, has set a new world record for wind electricity generation. The V164 turbine produced 216,000 kilowatt hours of electricity in just one day, enough to power 240 U.S. homes for a month. Offshore wind turbines have become increasingly more popular and efficient. Many northern European countries have invested heavily in the technology in an effort to move toward renewable energy. The share of wind energy in the European Union's electricity supply has grown from 2% to 12% since 2000 largely due to increased offshore wind generation. That's all for this week's environmental news report. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel to help promote environmental awareness. See you next week.